Creative Katie, Karen Burchill here. Welcome to my version of the Index Card a Day iCAD Challenge, Create Daily. I'm combining this one with my quote journal. The theme is Be You. I am following one of her prompts this time, Leaves or Petals, and there's a sneak peek of the finished project. I'm going to be highlighting the technique of using your own photos to collage with. So what you're looking at here is gel printed on top of my happy planner from last year. I've done some gel printing on it. This is a photo that I took at Bouchard Gardens here in beautiful Victoria, BC. And when I had the idea of using petals, I started looking for some and I realized maybe I could use my own pictures. And I pulled out the purple one and I matched it to this background because there is purple in the background. And if you look at the color wheel, purple and yellow are right across the color wheel from each other. That means that when you put them together, when they're dry, they are going to have a lot of energy and give your page a lot of pop. So I thought that was a good combination. So I am going to take this Julie Nutting stamp and stamp it out onto just copy paper. And since I've got the ink out and the stamp out, I'm going to stamp multiples of this girl. I know eventually I will use them. So these will go into my stash and be ready to go or partially ready to go for a, another project down the road. And I just have a folder in my big blue box, my filing cabinet, that has all the Julie Nutting dolls. I'm kind of following cook once, eat twice kind of thing. Stamp once, use four times. So once I find my X-Acto knife, I am going to cut out this Julie Nutting doll. Now you could use scissors. I prefer any kind of cutting using the X-Acto knife. I think that I've just, I've done way too much cutting as in my career as a teacher. And I just find this is faster and easier for me. And I'm loving this Tim Holtz glass media mat because you can cut right on it. It's tempered glass and I believe it says that you can cut right on it. But, you know, before you go and do it on yours, please double check that. I don't want to be responsible for you damaging anything of yours. Do your own due diligence. So I'm just cutting this girl out. Now I could have used, if I don't have a Julie Nutting doll, you can Google paper dolls find some free printable paper dolls, or you can use even a picture of a girl from a magazine. And I chose this girl because she's, it looks like she's wearing basically lingerie. It's a slip underneath. Now my idea is to take these petals and cut them out and make a designer dress for this girl. And I'm going to admit right here and now, this is not something I do frequently. Collaging magazine pictures is relatively new to me. And I really don't know exactly how this is going to all fall together. So while I have sped up this part of the video to about two and a half times, I did keep all of it in so you can see how I'm rethinking things and how I'm doing it and know that that's when you try something new, that's part of the process. I can't remember what the name of this plant is. I did find out after I had taken this picture because I just thought it was so such a spectacularly interesting plant.
But I do know after doing this that I will be doing, using way more of my pictures of the flowers and blooms in my own backyard, as well as from my, my many trips to Bouchard Gardens. I printed this out on just copy paper that I purchased at Costco and using my color laser printer. If you don't have a printer at home or a laser printer, you can take your photos to, uh, you know, a Staples or other office supply store and get them printed out and keep them in your stash. I'm just playing with how I can make this skirt, how I want to layer this on. And like I said, I'm figuring this out as I'm going on. And by the time I'm done, I have some ideas of what I would do differently next time, such as avoiding any straight edges. And I'm not trying to be overly precise with this. Buying new blades for an X-Acto knife will help make this process a whole lot easier. I think this flower just makes like for a ruffled dress. I think it's just so very, very cute. And actually, I think I, you know, I can see myself doing, experimenting with other blossoms and doing the same thing. Now, this idea of using the blossoms and petals as a dress is not my own. It, it was something I found in, from various people in Pinterest. but I can see myself using this and having some fun with it. So as you can see, I'm layer, put it, layering them up, arranging them, trying it this way, trying it that way, keep going back and forth. The good thing about making a video of it is I, when I play it back, I can say, oh, I really liked it at this stage, or I like this. I can always go back. So, you know, either videotape or take pictures of what you have, and then it's easy to go back and, and look at and make a decision. Which one do you like better? So I'm unsure which side is the girl is going to go on. So I figure, you know, I better figure out which sentiment I'm going to use and how much room I need for it. So I was planning on using the sentiment from my BU sentiment pack, which is my this month's theme for my quote journal. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? It's a Dr. Seuss quote, and I love it. But if I want this girl to have this dress and have, you know, some fullness in it, the quote seemed to be a little too wordy or long. So the index card a day challenge is to create every day. And it doesn't mean that you have to finish an art journal page for every day. Although for me, I think that is something that I will in all likelihood end up doing. But I'm not necessarily going to have a video for each page or creation that I make. But what I will be doing is posting all 61 of them on my Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram account and follow me, you will still be able to see all 61 of my version of index cards, which are either going to be on these repurposed happy planner sheets 
or on four by four cardboard coasters. And I talk about this in my first video, getting ready, if you want to check that out. Also, I'd like to remind you that if you would like to support my channel, you can shop through my Amazon link. You can, you know, buy things that I'm giving you links for, products and things that I'm using in the creation of the video that you're watching, or anything. It doesn't even have to be craft related. I will get a small commission. You do not pay anything more. So if you're choosing to do that, thank you so very, very much. The other way you can support my channel is to make a direct donation through my PayPal link. And I'd like to thank Jennifer and Maxine for their donations this last month. So now I'm kind of reaching underneath and trying to glue some of these together so they stick together so I don't lose the form that I have. What you saw me doing there, I just used my Delta Ceram coats, but you could use Liquitex Basic and just paint skin tone on the girl, whatever you want. You can use your coloring pencils, you can use watercolor pencils, whatever you have. In fact, the ones that I stamped, I'm going to color their hair and color the skin tone and be done with it. That is going to go into my stash partially done, a little more done, and then it just eases the creation time down the road for some other project. So now I'm adhering the dress, and I think this, this dress is just too cute. Fashion designers watch off you know, watch out, you know. I kind of made it look like she has a sash going over her one shoulder or one strap on the, on, you know. So here I'm trying to get rid of some of those harsh straight edges. And that's where, you know, I probably would have cut the shape of her bodice there a little bit more and emulated that if I were to do it again. So I'm still playing around with the quote and I decided that that Y fit in I can use for some other, I had another idea for it. So I picked this one by Coco Chanel and what I did is I printed this out on these clear Avery shipping tags. Now they're matte finish and I was able to shrink my sentiments from my Word document down to a smaller size here and I'm going to put make a video and show you how to do that if you've created some sentiments on your Word program. But this was the first time I'm using these stickers now I put it on an area that had pretty solid color underneath, not a lot of pattern, and I pressed it and it virtually disappears. It becomes very translucent. You, you can see the background through it and it's matte finish. There's no high gloss, which I don't like. So I'm really happy with these Avery stickers and I'll put a link to those as well. So now that I have the sentiment down and the placement down and I'm get ready to glue the girl down with the matte gel medium. And I find with back to the sentiment when it's on that clear paper it becomes less visible than and less of a focal part than if it's on the white background. It's two different looks, but I'm really happy with this and, and you will see me using this more often. So 
So I wanted to do some shading and I grabbed my Inktense pencils and using my swatched out colors, I pick, you know, a similar purple to what's on the page. And I'm going around the outside edge of the page. I could have used black, but I like the idea of having that little bit more of purple in there. It's just a personal choice. And sometimes you just want to change it up. You could use your watercolor pencils, Neocolor 2s, Gelatos, Distress Crayons. All of those will work for shading around the edge of a page. And because this is an art journal page, and I know I'm not going to be varnishing it or, or at this stage putting any more wet medium, I don't care if it's not a permanent thing like a gelato or a watercolor pencil. It's not going to reactivate and make become destroyed. So now I'm using the Stabilo All Pencil around the outside of the girl and I just want to shade and this kind of helps the focal image blend more into the background. I'm going around with the Stabilo All Pencil and then just activating it and teasing it out to get that soft shade, shadowy look around the focal image. Thank you so much for joining me on this Create Daily iCAD Challenge of 2019. There's a close-up of the picture coming here. There are some suggested videos that are in some way related to the one you've just watched. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. If there's a prompt you would like me to use or a technique you'd like me to feature, put that in the, in the comment section as well. Bye for now.